Welcome into Dragon Ball Super Dope. My name is Kyle. Thank you for checking this out. Special, I'm not going to say extra episode this week. I will say this is just the episode this week. Mainly because we're still banking up some movie stuff. So we'll get back to the movie stuff next week. I believe it will be Mystical Adventure with Feds. Pretty good one. You want it though, it's probably up on Patreon right now. Patreon.com slash Dragon Ball Super Dope. No, we're here today to discuss the San Diego Comic-Con panel that happened, San Diego Comic-Con at home. Um, It it dropped this afternoon, and we got our first key visuals for the new movie coming out in 2022. We also got a title for this movie and a quick little, I guess I'll call it teaser, but it looked more like just a simple promotion for how the the anime will actually look or the animation will actually look so uh it's a very impromptu show this week uh just in the discord watching this stuff throughout the day talking about it with the boys so i've got with me uh for this conversation marcus slash maris with the haircut woods marcus how are you man i'm great what's up what's up what's up super dope also returning for his second consecutive, second consecutive Dragon Ball Super Dope appearance. Uh, Jacob, how are you, man? Great, man. Glad to be here. Super dope. Super dope. Got lots, lots of good compliments on uh, the episode you did for the manga review with me the other day. So nice job on that, dude. Oh, thank you. Uh, we, also, we also have uh, Tyson um, Trujillo. Not to be confused with the bass player Rob Trujillo of Metallica, but... Tyson's here somewhere in the background. I think he's doing some dad stuff and maybe taking care of his baby, which is which is dope. So he's on mute and, and currently, um, you know, busy. But I'm sure he might pop in at a certain point or, or another. So Tyson, I love you, buddy. Good to have you. So I kind of want to go through each of the things that were said and revealed or revealed sounds Like something big and dramatic happened. Nothing big and dramatic happened. Although we did learn a lot from this Comic Con panel. I kind of want to go through things in order, but I think the biggest takeaway, more or less, is the fact that we got a title for this movie and uh, it is called Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. Dragon Ball Super colon, I imagine. Superhero. So I want to get <laughs> what a fucking. Uh, I want to get your uh, opinions on the title, Marcus. I'm going to start with you, buddy. What do you think of uh, the title of this 2022 movie, Dragon Ball Super Superhero? How many times can we fucking say the word super? Jesus Christ! I'll keep going with it, dude, all day. I fucking think that shit's hilarious. I think it sounds great. Super, super Saiyan, super God, hero. Super Saiyan, super Dragon Ball Super superhero. I'm I'm done with super. I get it. The whole title of the show is super. Just name it something else. Hero or why do they have to go into the superhero shit to begin with? That's a whole different story. But you don't know what that means, man. You don't know what that means. I will ask you for like we're gonna pitch the movie after we run through this yeah. the, the events I, of this I, panel. But I'm all the way out on the name of the movie. I think it stinks out loud. Damn, all the way out, and it stinks out loud. Stinks out loud. Uh, I, be a little more original. You know, I thought uh, Broly was bad enough title. But come on, think of something a little better. I, I've actually never thought twice of the title of the movie Broly, to be honest with you. I thought it was a fine, accurate name. It just, it, it's, for these people to be so talented and to be able to develop something so outlandish and, and fun and sometimes coherent, to be able to just shit all over a title like that, it, it just, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm all okay. Out. All right. Very passionate take. I appreciate it. Uh, Jacob, how do you feel about uh, this Dragon Ball Super Superhero title, man? You uh, for it or against it? How do you think? Uh, how do you feel? No, I don't like that. I ain't digging it. Superhero? I mean, come on. Same same thing. Like, why why super? You don't need to say superhero. It doesn't make any sense. I feel like it's the most generic 
title plus they put super on it period like i i feel like it was just a title with such little effort put into it i i don't like it i don't know i think you guys are making some awfully bold accusations against this title given that we've got really no context as to what the story is going to be about for this movie i do think it's interesting that we got no implication at all that it's going to have something to do with a lot of people were calling this to be a cooler and Tullus, Tullus movie. Um, got no implication that they're going to be in it. No implication they won't be, but the title superhero completely throws me off the trail of those two characters. And it kind of puts me in a realm where I'm like, yo, what the hell could this actually be about? Like, it, while I don't think the title is the best of things, I think it's a little dumb. I also don't think uh, this movie's going to be for us. We'll talk about that, but. Mm. I think uh, the title of it at least gets me wondering about what it could be. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not completely out on it. I want to know why it's titled this within the context of the greater film. So I can't pass full judgment on the title, but my initial reaction is, hmm, wonder what that means. I think I have such a hard opinion and a hard line stance on this because I'm I'm kind of done with everybody jumping on superhero bandwagon right now. I think they're they're trying to capitalize off of the success that Marvel has produced. They're trying to capitalize off of the su- success that My Hero has produced. I think they are really just falling in line with what is popular right now. And I feel like Dragon Ball has always been a trend setter, not a trend follower. And that's what we're getting in a title. I think it's low effort. Hey, that's a fucking super poignant point. 100%. Dragon Ball's always been the trendsetter, not the trend follower. And when I saw the title Superhero, I'm like, ooh, like, My Hero Academia Superheroes? You think Toriyama's sitting at home on a fucking Saturday morning like I am watching My Hero Academia? That'd be dope. Don't doubt it one bit. Well... I want to run through more or less what we were given in terms of information because it was very interesting what they chose to share with us in terms of visuals. So, uh, again, this was a panel for San Diego Comic Con 2021 Comic Con at home. Me and Marcus watched this shit. What I what I thought was going to be live it wasn't live. It was it was pre tapes. So, uh, the video link went up at about 1 p.m. Eastern uh, today, and we watched it and. Uh, Kicks off with a with the performance by my favorite Dragon Ball singer of all time, here in Kakayama, doing a dope ass version of Chala I Had Chala. That man has been making anime theme songs since like I don't know nineteen fucking seventy eight probably, and he's still kicking in twenty twenty one, looking like a man in his mid forties. He look good, right? He looks Ooh. fantastic, dude. What his little boots. Dude, right? The boots? He's like dancing on he clouds and like shit. He like a fucking rock star. Like, yes. He showed up. It makes sense that it's pre-taped, right? Now that, I'm, now that I've seen it and I'm like, yeah, duh, why wouldn't you pre-tape this? But the fact that I saw him start to do this performance and I'm like, dude, the people there must be fucking pumped right now. Good for them. <laughs> right. And then he gets to the end of the song, does both verses, the solo, all that shit. He gets to the end of it. Spaku, and then it's just silence. As silence. Like the, I was not the only one who noticed that. <laughs> like no, no live. And he hit it. that last sparking so hard, yeah. and it was just dead silence. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Marcus, you were there both times I watched this that I did. I fucking applauded both times. <laughs> Hell of a performance, man. So uh, Kagayama better be singing the uh, the song for this next movie because. They used Hechala for Kami to Kami, right? Battle of Gods, they had it, but it was redone by a band called Blow, I think. And then the last two movies has been original songs. The fucking one of which we sing all the time on this show. Then and freeze, I freeze, I freeze, I freeze. Gonna fuck your chest beams, gonna fuck your mom too. Shit like that. <laughs> and then the Broly movie f- had that stupid song with like the timpani drums and shit and the chants. I'm not down with that song. I don't fuck with that song. But 
if this is their way to say expect Kagayama to sing the the song for this movie, whoo-hoo, on board, baby, on board. So that's the introduction for this panel. This panel featured Masako Nozawa, the voice of Goku, uh, Aikyo Ayoku. I'm probably butchering pronunciations here, but Akio Ayoku. Uh, he's the head of the Dragon Ball Room at Shueisha. We also had Norhiro Hayashida uh, from Toei Animation. So the three of these people doing this pre-taped thing for Comic-Con at home. And our host, Sasha, who... Our host. Our host. Our host. Dude, when, I love this fucking guy. I want to hang out with this guy. I swear <laughs> to God. He seems like the nicest guy in the world. He seems like he loves Dragon Ball. And at first I watched it and I'm like, is this a like Latino man who looks kind of Asian? Right. Speaking English with like a slight Latino accent, but then he's speaking like super fluent Japanese. And, and then we watched it the second time. I'm like, nah, maybe this actually is a Japanese guy. I, and then I listened to more of his English accent and I'm like, yeah, maybe he's just like speaking really high level English for a, Jap- a native Japanese speaker. And he doesn't look like maybe he's, you know, half Japanese and his, you know, one of his parents is white or something. Like, I don't know. He, uh, appeared to me to be like racially ambiguous. <laughs> oh, I thought he killed it. I Dude, thought he was such the a great best job. part of the entire production. And he was fanboying out so hard on that stage, too. He was. Oh, yeah, dude. He was great. He, he was fucking happy to be there. My favorite part was Moscow Nozawa, but I think my second favorite part, like close second favorite part, was the host. Host. A host. Sasha. <laughs> great fucking job, buddy. If you ever hear this, we love you. And we hope yes. that you host every goddamn Dude, he was in that hype. I loved it. <laughs> I like how they did. I mean, I realize it's probably because it wasn't in front of a live audience. Uh, because it was pre-taped, I like that they were able to do some of it in English and some of it in Japanese. Like, as people who watch the subs for everything that comes out, you know, the week of, because we're fucking junkies and can't wait for it ever to be dubbed. Uh, reading it in subtitles was no big deal. And when he talked to Mosko Nazawa in her native language, it was it was entertaining. Uh, I yeah. genuinely enjoyed the host. I realize I'm putting way too much emphasis on shit that's not that big a deal. Let's get to the real information. So, no, actually, I felt that. I understood that. Like, I appreciated that. Yeah, no, they did. Because I'm sure they, they had to do redo that shit in uh, quite a few different languages, actually. So, well, when me and Marcus, so uh, I I wasn't worried about the all the dubs and subtitles. I was like, perfect. When me and Marcus put it on the Discord earlier today. I found the link and I'm like, I don't think this is right, man. This looks old. This no. looks like it's in a different language. What if it's what if it's subtitled in the wrong language? You're like, you should have seen like the first five minutes of me trying to fucking get this stream going. <laughs> I was a I was a hot manic mess, man. I was it not was having a, a good time. It was a panic. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I got the information firsthand and not from Twitter first. Not th- I couldn't. Dude, help. You came in so clutch. I got off <laughs> work. I got home. I opened up. Send a message and bam, you had it right there. Here's a link, bitches. That's what you get when you join the Discord. Links are in the show notes. So they they kind of they they gotta go over the top, in my opinion, with the company line in terms of like this is the most that Toriyama has ever been involved in his life in anything Dragon Ball ever. He's writing the story, he's writing the dialogue, he's doing the character designs. Like they really, really, really play up. The fact that Toriyama is super involved. They reread the statement that he put out via uh, Shonen Jump a couple of months back. That gives us the the teaser to uh, have an unexpected character play a major role. Still don't know what that is. I think um, in terms of nothing new in terms of a Toriyama statement, it was cool to see them um, at least read it and like, then have visuals to follow it up with, right? Plus a title. So somebody made a joke back then that the unexpected character could be somebody that's like in the cast that we don't see very often, like a uh, like a Gohan, like a uh, a great Saiyaman Gohan or something like that. Mm. Mostly as a joke. Or Pan. But now the title of the movie's revealed, and it's like, yo, wait a minute, great Saiyaman Gohan is a superhero. <laughs> Imagine. But they give us a couple of character designs, uh, sheets, I guess sheets, and they picked 
three of the most random characters, but I'm telling you, these three characters, all signs point to one particular character, maybe an unexpected character. Who knows? Uh, the first one they show us is a character design for Piccolo. And it's in the Shintani design, like we expected. I actually, um, I think it was last month with you, Marcus, Chapter 73 review. I, you know, said, oh, breaking news, like if they announced that the people who produced the Broly movie will be producing this movie. And like, it's like a visual comfort. I took that as a visual confirmation uh, in terms of like the art they were going to choose to use. Yeah. And, and they still are t using the Shintani character designs, but as we'll talk about a little bit further uh, into the discussion here, it's um, manipulated and um used in a different way or with, like with different technologies so uh we'll get there in a minute but like it's it's stuck out in my brain that i said that and like it wasn't a visual confirmation in terms of cgi versus no cgi well ugh, cgi lots to talk about here i guess in this episode but they give us the character design for piccolo in the shintani design they point out a minor update to his character design in that he no longer has like the pink patches on his arms and his elbow and stuff like that. It's more like a, an off yellow or something like a light yeah. yellow. I don't think that's relevant to the plot at all, but it's just an uh, illustration, excuse the pun, of them trying to get a little bit more manga accurate because when you do see Dragon Ball Z manga colored, it that's what Piccolo looks like. You know, so um, just, I guess, kind of like a recommitment or not a recommitment. It's not like that commitment had gone anywhere, but sort of just like a reinforcement of the fact that they are committed more to Toriyama's original vision of it and not something that's, uh, you know, thought up by a, an anime production studio at Toei. So we got Piccolo without a cape. They show us the difference in his arms and then they show him with a cape. The fact that two designs exist leads me to believe Piccolo's going to take off his cape at a certain point in this movie. And you know why? Probably to whoop someone's ass. Because that shit heavy as fuck and he's tired of carrying it around. I mean, that's part of it, too. Yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> but I think also because... Oh, he got to whip some booty. You got to whip some booty. I think you said it perfectly. Piccolo, when I think of him, I think of him whipping booty. So. I think that's a pretty good key indicator that Piccolo will be um, pretty prominently featured in this movie, which I think we all are pretty cool with. Uh, also, they give us a little bit more Piccolo in a minute, but the second main character design that they show, and this is the one that got me to freak the fuck out because it has big implications in terms of when this movie takes place. But mm -hmm. second character design they show us, Pension. Pan, as a five-year-old, I presume, how, however old you are when you start kindergarten in Japan, which I assume is around five or six, but... Usually, in the, in the United States, it's usually around six. Yeah, so... Five or six. Somewhere in that vicinity. Pan is in a school uniform, like with a little school badge on and a little hat, and she's got a stupid little girl haircut which I personally love. The fact that they brought her out as a character sheet to share at this is interesting to me, and I just, like, it was like, oh, they're giving us a random thing, like a little pan cameo. What the hell, man? But then they ask a follow-up question. I think it's Nozawa, maybe, who says it, or maybe it's one of the guys. For, maybe it's Ayoku or Ayashida, but they ask, like, does that mean that pan's, you know, going to be integral to the plot? And they straight up say yes. Like, yeah, Pan is important to this story. Oh, yeah. So the idea that Pan is going to be aged up visually in school, the next thing that I yelled was like, because this is the second character sheet, I'm hoping they're going to show us a bunch of shit, but it's two of three that I've now seen in, in my brain at the time. Um, I'm like, show me Goten and Trunks. Show me an aged up Goten and Trunks. Because yes. when Pan is four years old at the end of Dragon Ball Z, we see adolescent Goten and adolescent Trunks. If Pan has aged up a few more years, at, at, I'd say at least three years, 
Show me what Goten and Trunks look like. I swear to Christ, if they choose to leave them off screen in this fucking movie, oh, which I don't think they, they will. I don't think they, they will. But if they chose to, just to like mitigate the fucking thing of like, yeah, pan age, but like, you don't need to see Goten and Trunks. Don't worry about it. I will fucking burn a goddamn movie theater down. I don't give a shit. Uh, what'd you guys think of these first two designs? Uh, Marcus, I'll start with you, man. I love the Piccolo design. Uh, I like the the Shintani art style. I've said this on this podcast many times before. I think it just works for Dragon Ball in general. But um, the, the pan, the aging up of pan, give me the same vibes that it gave you. I want to see what that does and what the implication is for Goten and Trunks. And are they even present? The pan to me is... I know she was featured in GT, and they're probably going to want to bring her back into the fold. Um, I'm I'm hoping that they do that in a way that doesn't interfere with the other two. I want the other two featured. We have not the seen the other them. two meaning Goten and Trunks. Goten and Trunks, that's correct. We have not seen them since they got dumped off on the island with uh, uh, eighteen and and Krillin's daughter. What? Marin. Meryl? Marin, Marin. That's it. Um, we haven't seen those two since then. They were still kids then. It's time to move on. Give us something uh, a, a little fresh and give us some new designs there. Uh, but as far as the other two designs go, I liked them. I thought they were fine. Pan looked a little bit weird, but it was the school outfit, I think. was It's just not something I'm used to seeing, but um, but I thought Piccolo looked good. Yeah, for sure. Tyson, I think you're with us. You got a minute to give us your opinion on these character sheets? Yeah, dude, I think it's badass. They finally aged up. Hopefully they aged up Trunks and Goten. Yeah, I really hope that Pan is an indicator that they intend to move the story forward in time a few years. Like, And there's no way at that point... Like, if 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 you have the conscious decision to age up Pan, like there's no way you can't age up Goten and Trunks anymore. Exactly. Like, because how old was she in Super when it ended? Two, Maybe I believe. A year. Was she two? Maybe not. I mean, I think she's one at the beginning during the Battle. No, wait, she's unborn in the beginning of the Battle of Gods. When's she born? During the six and seven tournament? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I assume that she's at least five years old now, so if Goten right. and Trunks five are seven six. and eight years old at the end of DBZ, super happens, there's no reason that they're not at least fucking three, uh, five years older. Right, so they're probably like 15 or 16 now. Maybe a couple of years lower than that, but like, even still, like, they're, they're fucking teenagers. Make them hit their awkward puberty years already. I just want to see it, you fucking coward. Jacob, Piccolo, Pan, what you think, man? All right. I like the Piccolo. He's good. He looks good and fresh. I actually like the uh, the deeper purplish color versus the blue, as they pointed out in the video. Oh, yeah. That was that. the other thing I about like Piccolo, the, the sash yep. color as well. They changed it from blue that he typically has to red, which is another key indicator pointing to mm -hmm. an unexpected character named, I won't say it yet. I liked it, but. In Pan, I feel like this this whole Pan, Goten Trunks thing. Goten and Trunks have to be aged up. They have to, you know. I feel like they can't avoid it. It's been, they've had this same look and age basically since beginning of Boo Arc, you know. A long ass time. So they got to be aged up. But I also don't think it's so focused around them. I think maybe Pan has more of the focus here. and. Just because she's kind of in that age range where they started. Yeah, yeah, no, I guess we'll see uh, how Pan does factor. I mean, the fact that they said that she's an integral part to the story, that could mean she has a right. large role, or that means she could have a very small role, but like an important role to move the story forward. Like, you want to say Pan's an integral part of the plot of Battle of Gods. That, that's technically true, but right. she also was sitting in the fucking womb. So. It could go either way there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We got those first two character sheets. 
The third one we've got, which I think, again, points to potentially an unexpected character. Mm. The character's unexpected because <laughs> he wasn't in the last fucking movie. All right. That's, I'll start there. Uh, the last character, or I shouldn't say last, because we do have a fourth character sheet to talk about of a new character, but uh, of ones that we know, the third person they give us in this random smorgasbord of character designs, first Piccolo, then Pan, and then like one more cherry on top of the I don't give a fuck about these people Sunday is <laughs> Krillin. Krillin as a fucking oh, cop. Man. Cop Krillin, not my favorite Krillin. Yeah. And skinny um, Krillin. He yeah. looks very thin. He looks like he popped up a couple of inches uh, in terms of his height. But the yeah, big grew. the big notable change for him, though, is again speaking to the accuracy of what you know the faithfulness to the manga and Akira Toriyama's original vision. When they do Krillin in uh colorized manga, he does not have flesh colored eyes, he's got whites, uh, you know, that back his eye. So um, this character design for Krillin has white in his eye, which whatever. I don't really kick it. I don't really care. I prefer him without the whites, if I'm being honest, because that's how I've seen him on a screen for the last 30 years. But no harm, no foul. I don't really give a shit. Any any strong opinions on Krillin? Yeah, they made a pretty big deal about it. But I think they do that just be, just to be able to reinforce like this is Toriyama's vision this is his story he's super involved because even if he isn't I believe he is but even if he isn't they're gonna say shit like that anyway because all the goddamn nerds who were like it's not canon bro Toriyama didn't make that up himself so who cares bro like that's the reason why they fucking harp so goddamn hard on Toriyama's involved man Toriyama makes it canon like, that's why they fucking keep trotting this company line out there for that, those fucking chuds who were like, Dragon Ball GT, Dragon Ball Heroes, you like that shit? It's not even canon. Like, they do that because you guys are fucking easy marks if you tell them that Toriyama's involved. That's why they fucking beat you over the head with this shit. That's why they fucking make Krillin's eyes white. <laughs> <sighs> All right, glad I got that off my chest. Um, the next uh, key visual they show us, not a character design, but... A shot from the film, the river, waterfall, lots of waterfall imagery. But then if you zoom in, Piccolo's house. Hey. Piccolo's got a house. I thought he just stayed awake in the desert for like fucking five years at a time, waiting for the next <laughs> shit to pop off, you know? <laughs> I thought he just meditated on top of a mountain. Yeah, I, I thought really he maybe just hangs out on a mountain. I thought he just meditated under a waterfall sometimes. Like, they showed us the waterfall, and they're like, this is Piccolo's house. And I'm like, yeah, no shit. A waterfall is where Piccolo lives, for sure. Mm. And they're like, no, zoom in, idiot. There's an actual Namekian structure there. I thought you just lived up on the lookout, you know? Shit. That would make sense. After he fuses with Kami, wouldn't Kami be like, yo. Dende kicked his bitch ass out a long time ago. Yeah, Dende's like. Dende was like, dude, there's only room for one Namek up here. Get the fuck out. Then they was like, listen, uh, you ever been fired from a job and then continue to show up to that job every single day for the rest of your life? Because that's kind of what yeah. you're doing right now. <laughs> Real creepy. You got to let it go. Yeah. He had Popo do the eviction. He gave him the eviction notice. Popo gave him the old heave ho. It's a work of beauty. Yeah. So, yeah, Piccolo's got a house. It's an Amekian structure. Evenly two levels. Looks uh, not super roomy, but roomy for a... You know, single family alien slug man on Earth. So I'm just happy he's not standing up fucking sleeping in a desert for the last 30 years. That means a lot for me to learn about him. That means a lot to me to learn about him. Like fucking good sentence. Anyway, his house has two stories. Yeah, no. And he's also got a mailbox. Like potentially. No, th there's a mailbox there. No potentially there, man. That fucking mailbox. The mailbox is for sure there. How much mail is Piccolo getting? I can't imagine. Not much. Who's sending, who's sending Piccolo mail? Especially when like all his friends know how to talk with him telepathically <laughs> if they want. Well, she, does, does he have insurance for that house? Maybe he rents, bro. Who, who builds and rents out a Namekian house on Earth? Yo, the, the tournament director, the, the MC of the... the, the in Kaichi Budokai tournaments. That's the one who's sending him mail. 
Yeah, he's like, yo, Piccolo Daimo, you want to come and listen this next yeah. tournament? Actually, man, I'm going to get there in terms of like what the theories of, of pitching this story. But So before they give us the last key visual of this new character, I don't know if this character will be prominent or not, they ask everybody at the panel, Nozawa, Ayoku, and Hayashida, to sort of give, like, I don't know, a couple of thoughts about it, uh, the movie, um, before they, they show this visual, right? So uh, Nozawa says something to the effect of, it's an interesting project because Toriyama is always working on, like, a different twist on the story, and uh, it's always going to be an interesting outcome at the end. So, um, which whatever again that's a very company line to get people excited and interesting but she said something in there that i thought was very interesting um before she says this thing about new twists and keeping it interesting she said that she always thinks about a dragon ball movie and that there will be children watching uh children will always be watching i think is actually what the the subtitle said and i just kind of paused and i was like hmm yeah, no, we know. It's like a show made for 10-year-old boys in Japan. We we totally understand that. But at the same time, why are you pointing that out? That's not something you would typically point out. I feel like maybe you're getting me ready for something that maybe I'm not ready for. So that was my first red flag during this panel. Hayashida from Toei, you know, kind of repeats the company line that to uh, Toriyama will be super involved and he's writing the dialogue and blah, blah, blah. Um, and that that's when they share a new piece of Toriyama art. They basically, uh, this is the, my problem with this. Um, they, they show a character sheet of an unnamed character. He looks like he beat up Grand Moff Tarkin on the Death Star, stole his clothes, got a cooler cape, but also that he has the head of Ultraman, sort of, like a fin in the middle. And he's got the number one on his chest. And then there's another one of this. It's basically a copy, a second version of it, except he's got two fins on his head and the number two on his chest. So the way they kind of preface it is, um, you know, it's a new character that Toriyama thought up while he was in pre-production for the film. They don't normally show things like this, blah, blah, blah. There's like no indication that this character they showed us today is going to be a major important character in the movie, but he does have a pretty bitch in cape, so maybe he fits into the superhero motif. I don't know what to expect from this character. Uh, Tyson, what did you think of this gray haired dude, not haired, this gray skinned dude with the fin and the cape and the Grand Moff Tarkin clothes and numbers on his chest? He looks cool. Except he has a gun, or at least they had a picture of a gun. Kind of looks like a uh, galactic patrol gun, kind of. That's a good point, dude. I totally fucking skipped over that. There's a gun like right beneath his feet. That's kind of like they feature really. They yeah. they feature the design pretty prominently. Uh, so do you think the one and the two is going to be a level up, or you just think they're different designs? I mean, it could either be like he evolves to a second level denoted on his chest, or it could be like he's, he, it could be like a great Siaman one and great Siaman two kind of situation. Like it could be like a team of two. Again, kind of fits with the motif of superhero. All right. That's it. All right. This unexpected character, dare I say, dare I say, this unexpected character is Gohan, <laughs> but not just any Gohan. Great Siaman. A great fucking. Simon, I love a great Simon, dude. I'm all about it. Marcus, what'd you think of this gray? Has any, has any grown out of that yet, though? Fuck no, he don't, dude. He's got a five year old <laughs> kid at home. He's got a bunch of fucking superpowers. He wants to make the world safer for his daughter. He was got to whoop some ass every once in a while. But still got to go to a PTA meeting afterwards. You Let's think Gohan go shoulders by now. wouldn't fucking be employing the great Simon uniform even more in his older age? You are absolutely out of your goddamn tree, and you don't know Gohan. Marcus, what do you think of this gray finned fuck? He <laughs> uh, looks like the Rocketeer. Um, oh, God. I, the design is fine. Uh, you know, who knows what they'll do with it, if it's even going to be a... a remotely and you know, 
Who knows? It could be like a one-off gag character in one scene. Yep. That yep. really could be what they showed us. And given that they gave us Krillin in his cop gear, which I think will equate to a cameo, Pan playing a quote-unquote integral role, which could be important, but it could be over in two fucking minutes. And Piccolo? Like, you haven't showed me much, many things of consequence for this movie so far. So if, if you're showing me a character that's like a quick one and done, I'm not exactly surprised. Yeah, I, the character design is fine. It's interesting. They, it's got some harsh lines on the face. Kind of looks a little bit evil. Uh, I would assume that it's probably going to be a villain of some kind. But does it actually, you know, I can't imagine if they're not going to give us anything other than Piccolo, uh, Cop, Krillin, and a little bit of a grown-up pan. I can't imagine they're going to give away the villain of a movie in a in a character sheet like that. Especially w- with revealing it the way they did, just like this is a character Toriyama came up with. Like I, I honestly don't yeah. think this character is going to be anybody of consequence. Like we'll see him in the movie and be like, "Oh, there's that dude," and that'll be it. Like he'll be off screen, and as quickly as it takes us to realize, you know. Uh, Jacob, thumbs up, thumbs down on fucking Cattle Pestle Part Fucking Three slash Ultraman. What'd you call him? Ultra fucking Rocketeer. What, thumbs up, thumbs down. What do you the think? Rocketeer. Yeah, I, I I think he's got potential. I mean, first thing I see is you know they're both labeled one two. I can see if they play a significant role. You know, definitely some kind of fusion possibly. And then second is you know. They got a very kind of cold gray look, sort of like kind of reminds me of Hit in a way. So maybe not evil, but menacing. Maybe not the masterminds or something, but very, I can see them as being, you know, a menacing an opponent in some way because they, they kind of got a cold hit like feel, I feel like. Maybe, maybe it's one of those designs that Toriyama came up with real early on in the process and fell in love with and decided this is going to be some kind of character. I, again, I, I think what Marcus said, like this being the way they reveal the big bad of a new movie. No, probably not that, but. And it might not be the big bad, but the way you reveal that, you know, you, you never know what he's actually going to be. Yeah. Yeah. You never know. He could be just a the, the first glances of those. It's just. He's got a cool cape and also some cool boots and some Grand Moff Tarkin like pants and a suit. If they fuse, do they turn into the number three? Twelve. And that's the thing. Three fins on the hat, maybe. That's what that's what me and Reese were talking about. The idea of those two fusing together. Fusing. Yeah. Fusing and turning into three. That could be it, man. I'm telling you, the, the it, fact it that he's a got a cool cape, superhero motif is going to factor heavy into this thing. It could, he could just be part of a larger kind of, um, yeah, a st- like, all right. It kind of brings me to what my, what my next question is going to be. be. Well, no, not yet. Um, this one, they give us not a, uh, not a scene, not a trailer, not a teaser, but it's like a demonstration of what yeah. this is going to look like in terms of the the movie itself so not uh, even a teaser it's not a teaser this is not going That's to what be call it. from the movie like me and marcus watching this this afternoon i was like yeah man if we get like the level of goku bouncing around in the snow <laughs> and when we all thought it was the Yamoshi good before we knew it was Broly. Like if we get that kind of 10, 15 second teaser, like they gave us at that point, like that's what I expect. I'll be happy with that. I'll be satisfied. We figured that was the bare minimum and they somehow figured out a way to give us even less <laughs> than that, <laughs> man. <laughs> and what way I like less. is that, and what I like is that my brain was already on that fucking clip of him bouncing around in the snow. And when the movies, when this, when this little promo demonstrations clip starts, it's him bouncing up and down again. I'm like, you trolling cocksuckers. Yep. You know exactly what you're doing right now. <laughs> you they recycled the animation. They oh, just, man. they took it and just revamped it a little bit, put it in, put it in a, a computer graphic and. So in that Toriyama statement from a couple of months back, he does have a very um, 
you know, suggestive line that a lot of people looked into and, you know, overanalyzed and made some YouTube videos and bold claims about. Uh, mm. In terms of refreshed visuals, and some people thought that that means they could have been taking a hint from a few different other anime movies in the last few years, but primarily the Loop in the Third movie, which was like, you know, Loop in the Third's been around since the fucking early 70s, late 60s. And the fact that it's taken them this long to do a movie in a CGI kind of um, animation style, uh, people thought maybe it would be time for an older property like Dragon Ball to maybe do something like that. And uh, it was a hot piece of conversation for a couple of days after that first Toriyama statement. So we see this promo clip, and it's the Shintani designs, sure, but you see like the camera kind of move in like a 3d direction, like a, a crane swing in almost and like go around Goku 360 style. And he does his little ax kick forward with his pose down with his hand down and his arm up like that. And, uh, that's it. That's the end of the teaser, but it looks like a video game. It looks like, an entrance of OG Goku who does like the spirit bomb in Dragon Ball Z fighters. It looks like his introduction to a match. It's um, not entirely CGI, but it looks like it'll be definitely utilized quite heavily. So who wants to start Jacob? I'll go with you first, man. Jacob uh, was what, what'd you think of this, this promotion or this demonstration or whatever the fuck we're calling it. Well, honestly, I liked it. Like, I liked it. It's very sharp, detailed. And if it flows, if it flows good, I like it. You know, as far as the the battle continuing on and stuff like that, and the movements, if it flows well, I feel like I'll like it. Word. I'm not, I'm not ready to dislike it just yet. I'm hopeful. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably getting a little too down and out on this shit. Just being like, lazy motherfuckers. I've already played a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters in my life. I don't need to watch anymore. Well, see, I, I don't have that perspective. No? Have you never played Fighters? Nope. Don't. It'll make you hate this fandom more than you already do. <laughs> Literally, like, the Dragon Ball Fighters fandom, it's not even necessarily all Dragon Ball in terms of the fandom there. Like, some of it is just, like, toxic fucking fighting game fans which those people are a whole other level of jump the bridge please but dragon ball fans who are really into fighters they too can jump the bridge tyson what do you think of this uh this visual aesthetic man i like it it's it's fancy fancy for dragon ball I feel like dragon ball like champagne a champagne budget right of it Kind of like Demon Slayer a little bit, maybe. I love that movie. I know you hate Demon Slayer, but... I don't hate Demon Slayer, man. I don't fucking hate anything. I just, you know, I'm I'm a little bit more um, wise with my time. That's it. Hmm. Well, yeah. Mark, Marcus, what'd you think of this fucking... Uh, this, this, I keep wanting to call it promotion, but it's a demonstration. What'd you think of this demonstration? Uh, I have mixed feelings. I think it looks a little stiff, a little too plastic, uh, a little shiny for me. Um, I, I wasn't really impressed with the visual. However, the coloring looks pretty good. Uh, they kind of take that inspiration from the previous movies, uh, the Shintani style from the Broly movie, I would imagine. Um, but it, I don't know, man. The, his hair, as I look at it a little closer, there's no movement. There's no life. Everything looks so stiff. And to go from what we had in the Broly movie, where everything seemed so fluid and and flowed so well with the with the visuals and and the, the action itself, and their movements felt light. To go to from that to this, there's such a a harsh contrast between the two. And I, I've got some mixed feelings. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it. I, I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm willing to, to let them refine the process. This is also just a visual. It's not a complete prog uh, project by any means. Um, it, they could completely blow me out of the water with it when the movie comes out. But right now, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I think uh, you just said a lot of things that 
I kind of felt on the inside, but said wasn't there a gray in Goku's hair? Gray? I didn't like see any little, gray little, personally. Little gray. No. Like some gray. I feel like it's a silver shine on the front of. His I hair. think it's just. I don't even think it's highlights, dude. I think it's just like that's the the how it appears. Like that's the the medium in which they're animating these things. Like it gives it that kind of shine. Yeah. I think it's made just a light reflection sort of. Yeah. Effect. No, that's just that's some uh, shading shit. That's some shading shit. Yeah. That's not old man Goku stuff. No, that's shading. That's what I'm so concerned about. I, I don't think that it gives an accurate representation of what they want to put out on the product. I, I, it's too stiff. I don't think the lighting is right. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. Yeah. Um, I said it to you guys before we started recording this tonight, but uh, my money is on this being the most polarizing Dragon Ball movie ever made. Some people are going to, and like, that's what the understanding that the visuals that we saw today are very preliminary and that they're going to evolve and they're going to be refined in terms of, you know, from the sheet to the, to the actual animation. Like, uh, I think these things will, um, uh, let's be real guys. Like it's, it's a Dragon Ball movie. I'm obviously going to fucking be there and I'm going to love it. Probably. I'm just happy to get more Dragon Ball, but I can very easily see this movie becoming a, uh, a talking point that says like one, like with the with the the visual and the visual of it, like it looks like a video game, like it's such a departure from what we're used to. Like it's a brave, it could be a real brave choice visually for them that could be polarizing. Some people will either love it or hate it. Uh, but like also what Nozawa says, like I always envision that w- there will be children watching the movie, and it's called Dragon Ball Super superhero like people are gonna I, I bet you people are gonna watch this movie and be like this movie's fucking stupid it's for kids and like we know that like we know that this is a this is a television show made for 10 year old fucking boys in japan we are men in our 30s in america it makes no sense that yeah, we're still we, committed to this as we super. are we know what it's about we know we know who it's made for but when a movie like this happens for you know, the first time in a couple of years, we haven't had the anime or anything like that. Like, we do have pretty high expectations in terms of the fan servicey stuff they might do. I mean, up until today, a lot of us would have put money that Cooler or Turles or both were going to be in this movie based on some of the visuals we've seen in Shonen Jump. Doesn't look like that'll be the case, but that would have kind of tracked with what we are looking for in terms of like fans of our generation of our age, you know, a a 10 year old boy in Japan might not give a fuck about who Turles is, might not want to learn about him, might, might not be the greatest character to bring back out for whatever reason. Maybe they, you know, would rather see a new character. Um, the fact that it doesn't seem like it's going to be a fan servicey movie for us older fans, like Broly so definitely fucking was. And so was forgot to know of, those two being so fan servicey, and this one seeming to be the complete opposite of that, at least in terms of early hints. I don't know. I could totally go the other way, but this movie's going to be very polarizing. I bet you. Mark it down now. I will be vindicated when this movie comes out in twenty twenty two. Mark my words, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you think specifically? How do I think specifically what? As in, far as is it going to be visually, or do you think it's going to be like story plot? Both. It's going to change the story so much. Both. Yeah. People are going to be like either it looks like I'm watching a video game and old school fans like me who don't fucking watch Dragon Ball or love it like I do, who have a certain expectation and would like that expectation to be met. They're going to automatically dismiss it out of hand because it's something new and different. And personally, I don't think it looks as good as it could if they just did a more traditional animation style this is a very brave fucking choice for them to do i get lupin had success with it like lupin is something that its interest fucking cycles through in like generations like every fucking 10 years you get a new thing of like i'm a lupin fan and then they reboot the fucking anime throughout the last fucking 37 years like dragon ball is a constant you have certain expectations that need to be met when you put out a Dragon Ball thing. So uh, the fact that they are taking potentially such a big departure from what those expectations would be for a lot of old school fans, it 
coupled with Nozawa saying, I imagine a lot of kids are going to be watching. I feel like they're starting to set expectations that this movie's not for us old school fans. If we enjoy it, cool, great, mission accomplished, but it's made for a younger audience. Yeah, I, fellas, I, I'm, I'm in. I don't want to just sound like I'm shitting all over this stuff, but. Yeah, it's totally going to be a Gohan movie. Which I'm okay with. It's, and I, it's going to be a that, Gohan movie. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal. I really hope it's... I hope it's a Gohan movie. It would be so cool if they did, but I, they just drop the ball on Gohan every time. I'm afraid they're going to drop the ball on him again. Pan's going to get kidnapped. He's going to have to be the hero. I feel like Pan's, Pan's going to play some big role. I feel like she's gonna be half of this un, you know, this unexpected character belt and stuff, you know, because she's like five, six, you know, yeah, gonna explode into some super saiyan power, you know, whatever, maybe, who knows, probably not. Hopefully, it is, you know, Trunks and Gota, and that would be, that'd be the best that case scenario cool, in my dude. mind. I I've kind of jumped off of the Gohan bandwagon a long time ago. I think that, they, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think they they blew the, they they blew that a long time ago. I jumped off it as soon as Grace Saiyan Man. Once Grace Saiyan Man came into play, dude, I was done. Well, that was that wasn't terrible because they then recovered with that with the, the ultimate Gohan stuff. The problem that I have is that they let that opportunity kind of slip, you know, by having him get absorbed. Uh, you know, they had all of that potential. And then they just kind of build him back up to throw him away again, to make him a foil, you know, to make all of that potential become a foil to me was a poor choice. But, you know, and then whenever you yeah. trash him in, in Resurrection of F, you, you bring him back and he's completely just a shell of himself. You've ruined the well, character well, altogether. What's that go- Gohan that's before a tournament of power that all of a sudden He's in basically base form, and he can match Goku Super Saiyan Blue. You know, yeah, he's, that, he's pursuing that's... his own path. They they went into that. He's pursuing his own path, and then just whatever came of that, not much. It just uh, nothing. Same absolutely thing. nothing came of it. It was just well, uh, and and that too I is feel like that's the end of his story right there. Yeah, and that too, I think, is where this is all going. You, we've had especially in the in the in the manga as well we've had what probably two three four years where we haven't really seen oh, any other elapsed. character but goku and vegeta that's it you know it's been the goku vegeta story for the last i mean since the tournament of power uh got i don't remember who else was on earth for you know morrow so I'm I'm glad that they're going to give us a little bit of something else, maybe not the Goku show for once, Vegeta show for once, but uh, show us something. But I don't think it's going to be of any consequence. That's my problem. Yeah, well, I I I really like to see the uh, wrap it as a manga somehow. You know, I'd like to see these stories tie together somehow, especially by the time the anime comes around. I guess. I mean, that's the other thing, too. Like, this could be a completely, like, an original story that not set in the manga. We might never see it in the anime, which is fine because they can always, like, tie it in with a few panels or, like, a promotional manga or whatever. But um, people might have expectations for this next movie to either follow up on the Broly movie, give us something that we've seen in the manga, put to a visual, uh, you know, on the screen. Like... It seems like that's not going to be the case. It seems it's going to be a, an original kind of out there fucking idea. So uh, since watching this news this afternoon, I've kind of been rolling around in my head. Um, you know, the visuals they gave us, Pan, Krillin, Piccolo, the title, Dragon Ball Super, Superhero. I've been trying to figure out what this movie might be about. Um. Does anybody have some kind of crazy pitch before I uh, pitch my two crazy pitches? Anybody think they might know what this movie might be? Not really. Gohan's movie? 
So yeah, I mean, Tyson just said Gohan's movie. Uh, it, this could be a Gohan heavy movie. Um, I think the visual indicators of Piccolo, Krillin, and Pan could point to Gohan for sure. Pan's uh, gonna get that, kidnapped. Maybe. Uh, who who knows? Who knows? But we know that Gohan fucking is a superhero when he needs to go out and fucking show his superpowers. So I think more than anything, what we're going to see is a more grounded story in this movie than what we've had in the last, you know, the last handful of episodes in super, the tournament of power arc, the Broly movie, all of that has been really, even the Broly movie was so out there and what they tried to do visually and, and with the power and everything that was displayed with Gogeta and all. I think they're going to try to bring all of that back into a very small story where you get very character focused uh, storytelling on Gohan, Pan, Videl, maybe Chi Chi. You know, you get the family vibe again. Piccolo's back in the fold, uh, probably going back into his babysitter role. You know, I, I think you're going to get a very focused, small story. And then the superhero power comes from what you see in in superhero shows and movies very localized you know almost like a uh, spider-man or a, a daredevil where they are in like one section of a city and they're just saving that one section of a city you're dancing around a couple of my thoughts it's going to be scaled down but not in terms of like more character driven shit because it's it's still a Dragon Ball movie and it's a, a property with a million fucking characters. So I don't think they're ever going to have the time, the runtime in a movie to have it be a character driven movie. But I do think they're going to scale it down in terms of the power levels, the power that's displayed on screen. It's mm-hmm. not going to be Gogeta versus Broly. It's going to be like the great Saiyaman fucking beating up some bank robbers, maybe. Or, um, you know, them operating within maybe a tournament capacity. So hear me out here. Uh, the end of Dragon Ball Z, Pan is four, one, two, three, four years old, and she is smacking around grown ass dudes, and I believe the 25th Tenkaichi Budokai. So they have given us confirmation that she's aged up a few years. She's now in kindergarten. She's at or around that same age that she is at the end of Z. What do we know that happens at the end of Z? It's that fucking tournament that I just referenced. So maybe it could be a retelling. This is like best case scenario, given all the um, the hesitation I've got about this movie, about getting excited right now. If it were to shape out to be like a 25th Budokai movie, and it's the end of Z, and Goku's about to meet Oob, and Pan's competing, and stuff like that, that's best case scenario for me. So that kind of makes me ask myself like, okay, what does that have to do with the title superhero? I think that the Z fighters have been so powerful for so long and more or less not really in the public eye. Like either their memories have been wiped about things or they just haven't seen Goku fucking save the day in a long time without thinking that Mr. Satan actually did it. Things like that. So if they're going to show up to a high profile tournament like this, but still expect to compete against, I don't know, people like, like the, the, the Tenkaichi Budokai has a history of featuring superhero like characters. Like go on in the side the great Simon's the, an obvious example of it from the boo arc. Like he enters under that pseudonym to protect his identity and his power. So that way nobody at school realizes how powerful he is and he can still go about living his normal life goku's just like a motherfucking farming guy like goten is 10 years old vegeta is married to you know the richest most famous woman in the world like these are people who despite needing to compete in these tournaments also should probably conceal their identities so a real easy way to do that is for all of them to take up some kind of superhero uh moniker and disguise themselves Goku, Vegeta, Gohan running around in superhero gear together in order to conceal how powerful they are, but still be able to compete openly with other powerful people who have, you know, come on the scene throughout the earth that have nothing to do with the with the Z fighters. People like um like 
not a great example, but like Papaya Man in GT is somebody who competes in the Tenkaichi Budokai, but it's it's Oob operating the, under the same kind of um, you know anonymity that Gohan saw in the Buu Saga. Like he can't show off his power. Mighty Mask. Mighty Mask. Exa- exactly. That was going to be my third one. Goten and Trunks. When they're relegated to the fucking kids division, they're like, fuck that. Let's just do like a, a little rascals thing. Cut out some <laughs> eye holes in your fucking stomach and we'll compete as a superhero named Mighty Mask. Like, I'm sure there's other ones that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head, but those three, right? Th- like, there's a long track record of superhero type people being involved in the Tenkaichi Budokai. Given where Pan is in terms of age, it could make sense for them to tell that story, but also give me an excuse to buy a Goku superhero action figure, a Vegeta superhero action figure, so on and so forth. A Jackie Chung. Jackie Chung. I mean, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't put him under the superhero, but like same kind of idea, secret identity shit. Yeah. Yeah. People needing to conceal their identity to be able to fully show off their power. Same kind of idea. Imagine if Master Roshi fucking enters as Jackie Chan. If we get a Jackie Chan in this movie, dude, that's the kind of fan service that they're going to have to settle for. I like hearing once that. What if it's Oob? You bring up Oob's age and him being in the end of Dragon Ball Z. That's very interesting. Yeah, man. This could what be if the... Oob does show up in this movie? That would be... I think that, that would, would be no potential. I like, I, like, I like the potential of Oob. I mean, and that would be that fan service kind of shit that we've all been waiting for that they could deliver kind of, I don't want to say backdoor because that would be like the main through line of the movie is Goku shows up to this tournament to do this. But At that point, yeah. Um, that would be a really cool way to still have it be fan servicey, but a reimagined telling of how it goes and they can get creative with it and they can introduce new characters and try new styles because... They know oh. that all of us hardcore fanboys are just going to be like, oh my God, Oob's finally here. We can move beyond the end of Z and we'll be fine with it either yeah, way. Yeah, they still need to type the end of Z. Could be a good way for them to hedge their bets. Um, but then they also have this new character person who, you know, the one and the two and the silver fins and all that. Like, we don't know if that person's really going to be anyone of consequence at all. It could be a very minor character. It could be some kind of evil guy. Who knows? Um, I don't know if it's a very smaller uh, scaled down in terms of power, you know, planet earth driven story. If that dude comes to earth and he's fucking flying around in a cape and the only people who can stop him are Goku and shit, but they have to protect their identity. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I, if it is a 25th Budokai movie, I'll fucking do backflips. I'll learn how to do a backflip. Dude, get me a goddamn job in the Dragon Ball room. Somebody help me punch out my resume. I'll I'll submit it to uh, Akio Aoku and Norihiro Hayashida. Yeah, I don't think he was too happy to be there. Who's that? The guy from Toei? The <laughs> silver haired guy? Hayashida, he did, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. He was not thrilled. It's because they didn't announce the super anime returning, so. Yeah. His big moneymaker is... Uh, yeah, that was ah, uh, that's what I was waiting for. That's the news that I wanted to hear tonight. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Uh, nope. Um, so that's more like anybody I think we've pretty much hit everything that they gave us in these visuals. Have I missed anything anybody wanted to bring up? No, I think you've got it all. I really uh, don't not. Yeah, I don't think so. This event was a little disappointing because I don't think that they gave us enough. Uh they gave us a visual, which is nice. They they gave us uh, something to mull over with Pan being a little bit older, uh, some that that gives us something to talk about. But I don't think that they really have turned their hand over on what any of this is going to be yet. Yeah, they definitely played this one close to the chest. Um, yeah. I expected to see. Like I said, man, me and you were talking about it all day yesterday today. I was like, we get a 10 second teaser of them bouncing around and a, a little bit of a scene like, oh, that'll be great. And they managed to give us even less than that fucking somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was down around though. That's true. <laughs> um, Tyson, Jacob, any last thoughts before we wrap this shit up? I do have something I'm going to 
I'm going to make you guys uh, fucking sit through something in a minute. But uh, anything before we wrap it up, Tyson? No, nah, man. I'm excited. I just make go on great again. That's yeah. what I'm hoping. Make Gohan great. Mega. Well, see, no, we've gone through this acronym once before on this show, and it doesn't sound great. I obviously just said a word that started <laughs> with an M. Jacob, Jacob, what you got, buddy? No, I get it. I'm all about that uh, here. You know, I wish it didn't uh, emotionally do that to us personally. I'm worried about how it's going to turn out, but just hoping for the best here. Dude, pan aged up three years. It's gonna be fucking super dope. It it better be. Fingers crossed. We shall see. Uh, before we wrap it up, uh, I've gotten um, some real nice compliments this week. Uh, one came through way of Apple Podcast review, which I will obviously read last, so I can then uh, give you the call to action to uh, you know go do that. But um, I harassed some kid successfully that I've been following on Twitter for a little while. We've been you know. Dragon Ball Twitter friends for a bit, but it's always been like, yeah, man, I'll check it out. Like in terms of the podcast episodes, like we'll tweet about stupid shit and then like, yeah, that's right. You have a podcast. Maybe I'll look at that. And, and finally they did. And they've listened to several of the last few episodes. I think maybe the manga review from yesterday got them kickstarted, but uh, I got this today and I was like, oh man, these compliments always come through right when I'm ready to burn this podcast to the ground. Uh, from uh, Chris Brecky. Appreciate you, man. Uh, love the podcast. Being both informed and laid back is such a nice change of pace for this fandom. Oh, it's definitely nice to see. Wanted to show some love. Goddamn right, Chris. This fandom is goddamn awful sometimes. So happy in my drunk ass on me. What the fuck <laughs> you say? You want to get your drunk ass on what now? No, I said he felt happy hearing my drunk ass up on there. No, you were fine, dude. You weren't even that drunk about it. I, I you should listen to how good I am at it. At oh editing. no, I was drunk. I'm, I'm telling you right now, he was. I, I was drunk. No, I know, but I'll tell you that again. Right now. Again, listen to how good I am as an <laughs> editor, and you sound super competent. You're so welcome. <laughs> uh, and then I got this one on YouTube uh, from Colin Lafferty. He says, what's up, MFs? Automatically off to a dope star. All right. What's up, MFs? I've been listening to your podcast at work. 12-hour shifts. Love the show. Makes work so much easier. First real Dragon Ball I watched uh, was Dragon Ball Super. Frieza is my dude. But I went back and tried to watch GT. Lots of little Goku dicks. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, love the show. Cool shit. Keep it going. I don't even have to read the manga. I just listen to y'all. He commented that on our YouTube video for Sleeping Princess in Devil's Castle. Colin, appreciate you, dude. You're right. Oh, yeah, man. GT has lots of fucking little kid dicks. Very uncomfortable. If you're trying to stay off a list, don't watch that show. <laughs> if you try to get on a list, watch that show. Leave us a review. <laughs> and then the last one is actually perfect segue a review uh best thing you could do for this podcast is tell your goddamn friends to listen to it obviously but uh, second best is uh apple podcast review uh this one comes from our fucking buddy from discord we harassed this guy into joining the discord and leaving a review uh ooh, wah, ah, uh, uh get up come on get down with your sickness sickness C-Y-G-N-U-S, not like sickness, you know, SARS and shit. Uh, love the fact that the host, parentheses Kyle, sounds to me, mm. love the fact that the host Kyle ain't afraid to say how it is and actually will put in the work to keep you up on any news for Dragon Ball, which without an anime going is pretty hard to do. True. If you're looking for something to listen to that is Dragon Ball related or even just to help your work day go by, 100%, this is the podcast you should listen to. You'll not only laugh, but you will be well informed on Dragon Ball. And even made me get an iTunes account, which I'll probably never use again to just leave this review. Hell yeah, Cygnus. That's getting up, getting down with the Cygnus. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you. That's badass. If you can harass a motherfucker into signing up with Apple, Steve Jobs, the devil, etc. That's how you know you're real good at your job. <laughs> 
He signed away his life just to leave a review for us. Dude, he hit accept on the TOS just to leave a review. It's so sick. Human centipede shit just for that. Wow. Why are you trying to shit in everybody's mouth, Jacob? That's weird, man. Stop it. (laughs) But the best thing you can do for us, tell your uh, other Dragon Ball friends about the show, share it with them. Don't hog it all to yourself, dude. Nobody, nobody likes a fucking podcast hog. Uh, but also Apple podcast, re- Apple podcast reviews help other people find the show. Want an uncut version of this discussion? You can go check it out on Patreon.com, patreoncom slash Dragon Ball Super Dope. That's literally the URL you put in. There are also links in the show notes. I don't know how I get the question as often as I do. How do I find you on Patreon? I literally give you a link every single week. So you can check it out there. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Uh, we should be back to the movies next week. Mystical Adventure with Feds. But uh, this was an important episode to dive in on all these visuals for this new movie. I'm telling you, man, the great Saiyan Man movie. It's going to be Gohan's time. If ever there was a time to see Gohan ascend to the lead character role, it's going to be and his stupid great Saiyaman garb. Boys, as anything as you... As long as he's busting out that new form. As, yeah, his new form is he fucking put the helmet back on and got rid of his white bandana and his sunglasses. His new form is he reverted back to his high school shit. <laughs> Any parting thoughts, Tyson Marcus? Dragon Ball should be a leader, not a follower. That's the most poignant point in this yeah, entire yeah. podcast. We are trendsetters, not trend followers, dude. Well put. Tyson? No, oh, man. Well, it's just awesome to be on the show. Yeah, man. Happy to have you back. I like your Spider-Man shirt. It's cool. That's a Spider-Man shirt, right? Yeah. My other asshole. Hell yeah. Nice fucking shirt. All right. It's going to do it. Super dope. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 Movie coming out in 22. You guys like how I blah 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 through the end of the show? That's like my MO. If you got to the end of this, great job. I have some more stuff to say to you. So if you got to the end, you know that the secret character I think they're hinting towards for this movie, potentially anyway, Gohan, great Siaman. Siamon. We're doing uh, Discord watch-along parties on Saturday night. We've been doing the movies the last few weeks. Last week, though, in honor of the manga, I decided to do like an underappreciated block of Vegeta moments. So five, six, seven of us were in throughout the night just bullshitting on Vegeta stuff. This week, I kind of want to do Siamon, but everybody seems to hate that idea. So if you got a better suggestion for the watch-along this week, one that like, uh, you know, isn't like boring... Like somebody said, fucking who cares? People have suggested some boring things so far. So if you got an interesting block of episodes that you want to watch and talk shit on, go join the discord. Links are in the show notes. Uh, Also one quick correction. Uh, My pitch for this movie in this episode focused around uh, the Tenkaichi Budokai at the end of Dragon Ball Z. Accidentally called it the 25th Budokai. I think like three times. And each time I heard it while editing, I thought to myself, oh, that's not it, dummy. Your Dragon Ball credentials going right down the drain as if you had any anyway. I obviously meant the 26th, okay? You fucking weebs. I'm a weeb too, though. So here's some sad music about the mistake that I made in this Dragon Ball episode. I forgot I had this one, found it again recently. Okay, bye. Oh, yeah, rate, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Tell your fucking friends. Bye.